So we took a quick trip over to the coastal farm and ranch. It's always a dangerous time of year to go there because they've got their baby chickens. And here's a good tip for everybody out there. If you're buying just a few chickens, can't be trusted because you're always videotaping instead of focusing. Where did they go, Brian? This is all of them. No, I bought more than six. They've been Brian. No. They've been absconded with for some other project. I wouldn't. I wouldn't <laughs> leave them out in the rain if I was using them. They're gonna be out in the rain. They're going in the garden. Well, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't be using them if I stole them in the garden. Well, they haven't been in the garden yet. You were trying to protect them, and I was like, that's ridiculous, because they're going to be stuck in the ground in the garden <laughs> with things growing on them. So silly. You're so obnoxious. He's just sitting there like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> My job to annoy you is closer <laughs> up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Tomatoes in the in-ground garden. Wendy wasn't feeling really well and didn't want to be on camera for planting these tomatoes. Even though she wasn't feeling well, she managed to get one, two, three, four, five beds of tomatoes planted. Our first plan to have wooden stakes stake up each individual tomato plant didn't work. The only thing that would drive those stakes in deep enough so that they wouldn't wobble was a T-post driver and they were as likely to break in half as to go into the ground in one piece. So we gave up on that. We're gonna get some actual T-posts and put them on the edges of the beds so we can string pieces of twine between them and then just weave the tomatoes up as they grow. This is looking like a really beautiful spot to me. I'll give you a quick look here.
we're a little afraid that this bed in particular won't get enough sun for the tomatoes because of our dogwood tree up here. We'll just see how it goes. We've got a few tea posts on hand, but nowhere near the number that we were gonna need for this garden. So we took a quick trip over to the coastal farm and ranch. It's always a dangerous time of year to go there because they've got their baby chickens out. Wendy found a few she wanted to bring home. This is what we like to call our chicken nugget happy meal. There's six of them in there, different kinds. And here's a good tip for everybody out there. If you're buying just a few chickens, wait until some of their, some of their stock is a little bit older because everybody wants to buy the really cute little ones. And when they get a little older, then they go on sale. So we got these little, little chicks for a dollar a piece. It's a great deal. Not only does it cost us, you know, half or a quarter of what it would have, but the store has already paid for all the food that they've eaten so far and the chickens are a little more likely to survive because when they're really little that's when they're pretty fragile anyway this is our big pile of tea posts i'm sure nobody wants to see me pounding in tea posts so let's go introduce these six chicks to their new little brothers and sisters Those brand new chicks and our home hatch chicks were wary of each other at first but by the end of the day they were all huddled together for warmth you might remember that bird nest on the back gutter of our house well those baby chicks have hatched let's take a look
here's what the in-ground garden looks like now that I've got those T-posts in. It's not perfect by any means, but the garden beds themselves weren't that perfect to begin with. I actually kind of like this patchwork cattywampus kind of a look. It's got a friendly, it's got a friendly vibe that just seems to say, plant a garden. It doesn't have to be perfect. 